Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is for a flower for Christmas dishcloth. This dishcloth is such a great design to decorate your kitchen for the holidays and you can change the colors and make this for any time of year. Now this dishcloth measures 8 inches in diameter from side to side, just the perfect size for doing those dishes. So let me tell you what you're going to need for this dishcloth. And because we're using four colors, if you have leftover stash from other projects you made, this is a great pattern to use up those extra odds and ends of yarn. It doesn't take very much of each color. So let me get started and show you what you're going to need. So the yarn I'm using today is the Premier Home Cotton, and this is 85% recycled cotton, 15% polyester. It comes in a 131 yard skein, 102 meters, 2.65 ounces, and 75 grams. Now you only need a couple yards of yellow for the center, if even that. And this is color Sunflower. It's color number 38. Dash two zero. Then I chose Cranberry Red. This is color number 38-07. And I'm going to say about a half an ounce or less for the flower and this outside border. Now I did forget to mention this is a four medium worsted weight yarn. So again, a half an ounce of the Cranberry Red. And then I chose this beautiful Christmas green. This is color number 38-14 Christmas green. And you're going to need about a half an ounce of the Christmas green as well. And the last color you're going to need is color number 38-01 white. And I'd say at least one ounce or less of the white yarn. And these are all brand new skeins of yarn that I started with. And you can't even tell I used any of the yarn. So you're going to be able to make quite a few of these dishcloths if you purchase one skein of each color. So those are the colors you're going to need. And you're also going to need a size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. So grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get this project started. I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. We're going to begin and we're going to chain one. You're going to yarn over the hook and pull through the loop on your hook. This creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, and four. And you're going to skip three chain, one, two, three, insert into that last chain, and we're going to slip stitch and form a ring. Then you're going to see a little circle inside the ring, and this is where we're going to put all of our stitches, right into the center of that ring. And sometimes when you're starting these projects, it's really hard. Thank goodness that's why I keep my fingernails a little bit longer so I can really hold on to my work. But you can grab a hold of this piece of yarn left over from starting your chain if that helps hold on to your work. We're going to begin round one and we're going to chain one. This chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a total of 12 half double crochet inside this ring. So let me show you how to do a half double crochet. You're going to yarn over, insert right into the center of your ring yarn over and pull through the center of the ring. You're going to have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you make a half double crochet. That is one of 12 half double crochet back into the center of the ring. And as you're making these stitches, that center of the ring will open up a little bit. That's two of 12. Half double crochet back into the center of that ring. That's three of twelve. 
half double crochet back into the center of that ring. That's four of 12. Continue and make eight more half double crochets in the center of the ring and I'll be back and show you how to join round one. I'm over at the end of round one. I worked 12 half double crochet around my ring. So what I do is I pull my hook out and I just do a quick double count just to make sure I have the correct number of stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So it's always best, it only takes a couple seconds to make sure you have the correct stitch because once you fasten off and you don't have the correct stitches, then you gotta start all over again. So just take that couple seconds and double count your stitches. You're going to join by inserting under the top two loops of that first half double crochet. Slip stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Now I'm just going to fasten off my yellow, and I like to leave a longer length because I use my yarn needle to weave in my ends, and it's always better to have more yarn than you need than not enough so you can maneuver that in and weave it in nice and tight. I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. And then when I get done with my dishcloth, I'll take this yarn and I'll weave it down through my stitches and then I'll weave it back through. And if I have enough yarn, I'll even weave it a third time. Because when you're doing dishes, you're going to be using this and it really pays to have your ends nice and secure. So what I like to do now is I like to close up this center hole. So if you grab the piece of yarn that you started your beginning chain with, I'm gonna turn this over to the right side. So I just hold on to this and I just pull tight. And you can see how that closed up that center hole. And you can just pull it again and make sure that's nice and tight. And then again, I'll weave this end in around the back. So it's always nicer when you close up that hole and just make that nice and tight. So now I'm going to start round two. So I'm going to grab my red. Now for round two, I am not going to join in my usual way. I am just going to pull my yarn through. So I'm going to leave about a six to eight inch length. And then when I'm done with my dishcloth, I'll come back and knot it with my yarn needle and weave in the ends. So I'm going to come up here to where we fastened off. So when you look at your work, I'm joining right under my knot where I joined. Instead of going under these two loops, I like to come over here and go right under that knot of that stitch, right here in this small hole. Now it's a little bit tight to get your hook in that stitch, just poke it through. And again, leave about a six to eight inch length. And then you're just going to pull your yarn through. Yarn over and just pull it right through the stitch. Not very far, just so you can make a loop. Now we're going to be working a three triple cluster. So don't let that scare you. I'm going to walk you right through it. We're going to begin with a chain three. This chain three will be our first triple half worked. And when we do these clusters, we're always leaving the last loop of each triple on our hook. You're going to yarn over twice, insert back into that same stitch, just poke it right through. And again, this first stitch is going to be tighter than the rest. Yarn over, pull back through that stitch. You're going to have four loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a triple, leaving the last loop of that stitch on the hook. We need to do that one more time. You're going to yarn over twice, insert back into that same stitch, and again, it's a little bit tight. Yarn over and pull through. Now you're going to have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, 
yarn over and pull through two loops. When you look at your work, you're going to notice you have three triple stitches, that first being your beginning chain, and you left the last loop of each stitch on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your first petal of your flower is made, and this is a triple cluster. Now, this one's made differently because we had to start with a starting chain. So now we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. Now we're going to begin our repeat and we're going to work a three triple cluster into the next stitch and chain three. And we're going to repeat that around our work. So let's go ahead and make our first full triple cluster. You're going to yarn over twice, insert under the top two loops of the very next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have four loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. You made your first triple leaving the last loop on your hook and you have two loops on your hook. We're going to do that two more times into the same stitch. Yarn over twice, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have five loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops only. When you look at your work, you made your second triple, leaving the last loop on the hook, and you now have three loops on your hook. We need to do that one more time, yarn over twice, insert back into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have six loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. You have four loops on your hook and when you look at your work you're going to have three triple stitches and you left the last loop of each stitch on your hook. You have a total of four loops. You're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook. Your second petal is made and now you're going to chain three. And that is the end of the repeat. Now I'm going to walk you through it one more time step by step and then you can continue on your own. So let's begin. Yarn over twice, insert under the top two loops of the very next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have four loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. We need to do that two more times into the same stitch. Yarn over twice, insert into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. You now have two triple stitches leaving the last loop of each stitch on the hook and you have a total of three loops. We need to do it one more time, yarn over twice, insert into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You now have six loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. When you look at your work, you're going to have three triple stitches. You left the last loop of each stitch on your hook and you have a total of four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook. Your petal is made. You're going to chain three. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead, if you need help, just click back on the video. Again, you're going to work a three triple cluster into the next stitch and then chain three. Repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two. I have a total of 12 petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. You should end with a chain three for the end of the repeat. And when you look at your work, sometimes my new crocheters, I have to point this out because sometimes it looks like you have an extra stitch. This is not a stitch. This is what I call a joining bar. When you join around together, it creates a horizontal um, bar across your work. So this is not a stitch. So once you have your 12 petals made, 
then round two is finished. So now all we have to do is come up and join our work. You're going to come up right to the center top of this beginning three triple cluster, insert right under the top two loops, and then slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round two is finished. Now we're going to go ahead and fasten off our work and again I like to leave a longer length and I'll have all these long lengths hanging on my dishcloth until I weave them in. Again I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates your secure knot. And again, you're just going to bring that yarn over. And I use my yarn needle. It's so easier to use a yarn needle. Just thread this in your needle, weave it down, in and out through these stitches. You can come across here and then back over and back over again. That's why I leave a longer length. So round two is finished. So let's grab our Christmas green and start round three. So for round three, I joined my green onto my hook. And again, you can join your yarn in whichever method you prefer. This is my method that I prefer for this round. I joined with a double knot, and then I'm going to insert my hook from front to back through any chain three space. Yarn over, pull back through, and then pull through the loop on your hook. And this just creates a nice join to my yarn. I'm just going to slide this over a little bit. I'm going to chain one, and now we're going to make our shell stitches in each chain three space around. We're going to work a half double crochet into that chain three space. Then you're going to work a double crochet into that chain three space. You're going to chain two, and then back into the same chain three space, you're going to work a double crochet. And then finish your shell with a half double crochet into that same chain three space. Your shell stitch is made. So we're just going to repeat this in every chain three space around. So let's do the repeat again. You're going to half double crochet into the next chain three space. Double crochet into the same chain three space. Chain two. Double crochet into the same chain three space. and then finish with a half double crochet into that same chain three space. Your shell stitch is made. So let's do it again. You're going to your next chain three space, half double crochet into that chain three space, double crochet back into that same space, You're going to chain two, double crochet back into that same space, and then finish with a half double crochet. Your shell stitch is made. So go ahead and continue. You're going to work in the next chain three space and work a half double crochet, double crochet, chain two, a double crochet, and a half double crochet in each chain three space around, and I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. We just worked one shell stitch of a half double crochet, double crochet, chain two, double crochet and a half double crochet in each chain three space around, you're going to have a total of 12 shell stitches. So now we're just going to go ahead and join our round. So you're going to come up to the top of this very first half double crochet. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, go over right under the top two loops of that first half double crochet, insert under the top two loops, and slip stitch your work together. 
Now I'm going to fasten off my green. So round three is finished. So now you want to grab your white and then we'll begin round four. Now it's time to start round four. I already have my white attached to my hook and again you can join your yarn in whichever method you prefer. We're going to start in any chain two space of any shell around. I'm just going into my very first one and I'm going to slip stitch through that chain two space and through the loop on my hook and this just joins my yarn in a nice secure way. So I'm just going to pull this over to the side and now we're going to begin round four. We're going to begin with a chain three. One, two, three. Now we're going to work six double crochet into the same chain two space. You're going to yarn over, insert into the chain two space, work six double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of seven double crochet. The beginning chain three counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven double crochet into that same chain two space. So now to finish the round, we're going to work seven double crochet in each chain two space around. So let's begin. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain two space of the next shell stitch, work seven double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And again, just do a double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double crochet into that chain two space. So let's do it one more time. You're going to find your next shell stitch. You're going to work seven double crochet into that next chain two space. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what I like to do is I just like to do a real quick stitch count every time I do one of my shells. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So go ahead and continue. You're going to work seven double crochet in each chain two space around, and I'll meet you at the end of round four. I'm over at the end of round four. We just worked seven double crochet in each chain three space around. Now we're just going to join our round. You're going to come up to the top of that beginning chain three, insert into the top chain, and slip stitch your round together. Round four is finished. Now we're ready to begin round five. Round five is a pretty simple round. We're going to begin with a chain one, and we're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch around. Yarn over, insert right back into the same top chain of that joining stitch, work a half 
double crochet. Half double crochet into the next stitch and remember to go under both of those top two loops, work a half double crochet. Half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of round five. I'm over at the end of round five. We just worked one half double crochet in each stitch around. So now we're finished with our white. So we're just going to finish the round by joining our round together. We're going to insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet stitch of the round and slip stitch your round together. I'm going to fasten off my white. And again, I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So round five is finished and now we're ready to begin round six. Round six, we're going to be using the red. So I'm gonna grab my red and we'll begin round six. Now we're ready to begin round six. I already have my cranberry red attached to my hook and again, use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. To join my yarn, I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to go right back into the joining stitch right here where I fastened off. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on my hook. And this just gives me a nice secure join of my new color. To begin, we're going to chain one. Now this chain one does not count as a stitch. You're going to insert right back into that same stitch work a single crochet. You're going to chain two, insert back into that same stitch and work a single crochet. So we just made a small shell or V stitch where you made a single crochet, chain two and a single crochet. We're going to skip the next two stitches and now we're ready to start our repeat. Into the next stitch, you're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. You're going to skip the next two stitches, and that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Into that next stitch, you're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back into that same stitch. You're going to skip the next two stitches and that is the end of the repeat. I'll show you one more time. Into the next stitch, you're going to work a single crochet, chain two, insert back into that same stitch, work a single crochet. You're going to skip the next two stitches and that is the end of the repeat. So if you need help just click back on the video. Again you already skipped these two stitches so the repeat you're going to work a single crochet chain two single crochet into this next stitch and then skip the next two stitches. Work a single crochet chain two single crochet into this next stitch and then skip two stitches. You're going to repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round six. I'm over at the end of round six. This is what your work should look like. You worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that first stitch. You skipped two stitches, worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the next stitch skip two stitches and you repeated that around. So now when you get over to the end of round six, when you work your last repeat, you have those two stitches remaining, which is part of the last repeat. And this little space here is your joining bar. 
So now we just have to join our round together. So we're going to go over to the top of this beginning single crochet, insert under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my red. Again, I chain two, pull my hook up, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down. And again, you're just going to weave these ends in on the back of your work. So we have one round to go and then our dishcloth will be finished. So grab your green yarn and let's begin round seven. I already attached my Christmas green to my hook and you can attach your new color in whichever method you choose. You can choose any chain two space around. I'm going to join my yarn in the chain two space of this first V stitch or shell stitch. You're going to insert from front to back, yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on your hook. This just secures my yarn. Now we're going to chain one you're going to single crochet back into that same chain two space, chain two, and then single crochet back into that same space. Now we're going to start our repeat. Our repeat, we're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in each chain two space around. So let's begin. Find your next shell or V stitch, insert from front to back through the chain two space, work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back into that same chain two space. And that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Find your next V stitch, insert from front to back in the chain two space, work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet back into that chain two space. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's do it together one more time and then you can continue on your own. Find your next V stitch, insert from front to back through the center chain two space, work a single crochet. Chain two, insert back into that same chain two space, work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue. You're going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in each chain two space around. And I'll meet you at the end of round seven. I'm over at the end of round seven. We just worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in each chain two space around. And now all we have to do is join our round together. So you're going to come over, you're going to skip that beginning chain one where we joined our yarn with that slip stitch. You're going to come over to the first single crochet, insert under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my Christmas screen. I'm going to weave all my ends in on the back and again you're going to just take your yarn needle. Yes, I know it's a lot of ends, but it's a beautiful dishcloth. And if you weave your ends in as you go, it's not so much work. You're going to thread this through a yarn needle and just weave it in and out through these stitches, bring it back and then take it down through for a third time. And remember, as you're doing dishes, you really want those ends nice and secure. So this is the front of our dishcloth, and this is the back. When you get it all done and all your ends are weaved in, you can't even see your ends. So I hope you enjoyed today's crochet tutorial. Please make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here at Creative Grandma's channel. We also have this pattern in the written PDF that is available on our website, and I'll post that link in the description box underneath that video. Make sure you check out all the patterns we have available. We do have some free patterns on our website, so make sure you check that out. So until next time, Happy crocheting, everyone.